Hey, I wanted to clarify a couple of things about why you get the VO2 slow component and what it has to do with the size principle and peripheral fatigue. Remember, as you exercise, as you get fatigued, you have this slow component increase in VO2, where when you're fresh or if you're fit and it's, and it's not fatiguing, your VO2 hits a steady state and stays the same. If, it's, if something's really hard for you and you begin to fatigue, your oxygen consumption or your VO2 doesn't hit steady state, but it progressively rises and rises. What does that have to do with the size principle or why does that happen? Why do you get, why do you require more oxygen and more ATP to do a given exercise uh, when it's fatiguing to you? Well, first off, let's review the size principle. What the size principle teaches us is that when you wanna do a given amount of work, let's say you wanna do 150 watts of power. You wanna, your muscle wants, you wanna generate 150 watts power. In order to do that, you have to recruit multiple motor units. You'll first recruit a type one motor unit, that's single one. If it's not, it, type one motor units can't generate a lot of force or a lot of power. So chances are you'll need another one. And so you recruit a second. So now you have two motor units going. And each, each time a motor unit contracts, it requires an ATP to go through the contraction cycle. And then if that's not enough, then you're gonna need a lot, right? So in order to hit 150 Watts, we're gonna need all of our type one motor units here just represented as three of them. But then we also have to recruit these type two A's and we'll have one, two, three type two A motor units going in order to reach that 150 Watts. Notice that the type two A's and the type two X's are more are vertically taller than the type ones. They generate more force when they're well rested. The, the type two X are huge, right? They generate a lot of power and a lot of force when they're well rested. So if I, with the size principle, if I wanna generate 150 Watts of power, I need to have those three slow twitch motor units, type ones, and these three type 2A motor units in order to generate that. Now let's say that I've been exercising for a while and I begin to fatigue. These type 2As, they have a decent amount of endurance, but they'll fatigue eventually. And what does that look like? The type 2Xs are extremely fatigable, all right? They're not gonna be able to generate as much force. They'll still go through the contraction cycle, Actin and myosin will still be binding, uh, but the force they generate with each, each contraction uh, is reduced. And so here's what it looks like if you start to get partially fatigued, right? So look at the vertical, like how tall the type ones are. They're still about the same. Your type ones for a given contraction cycle, they might fatigue a little bit. They might get a, dim, a diminished force output per ATP or per oxygen, but, but not that much. But look at your type 2As. They'll shrink a decent amount, a little bit, right? So for every contraction, they generate less force. And, and then the type 2Xs, you'll see it, they also will generate less force than before. This becomes more clear when you get, as I've illustrated, the, the very fatigued condition, right? So if you're super fatigued, uh, look how tall these type 2A motor units are. They don't generate a lot of power. They're still consuming ATP to go through the contraction cycle, still consuming oxygen, but they can't make a lot of force or power. And the type 2X is too. So they're, they're less efficient. Now, what does that mean? How does that lead to a VO2 slow component? Let's say that you want to cycle at 150 watts, okay? If your muscle is fresh, that means you'll need to activate and power three type one motor units and three type two A motor units, right? When you're fresh. So that's gonna be, let's just say for every motor unit, it's one ATP, that's gonna be six ATP and the oxygen that, that requ is required for that. But what happens when you start to fatigue? If you wanna generate 150 Watts, let's look at 150 Watts all the way across. If you're semi-fatigued, now that doing those three slow twitch and three type two A's isn't gonna be able to get you to that 
150 watts. So now you have to recruit one another one, another motor unit, that type 2X fiber, okay? And that type 2X fiber is going to require more ATP. It's a, first off, it's, it's an additional motor unit. So instead of having six motor units going, now you have seven that you have to power seven motor units. That's more ATP, more oxygen. So that's contributing to your slow component. It makes you more inefficient. But the other thing that happens with these type two fibers, especially your type two X's, is that they fatigue. So while you can get away with just using, adding on that type two X, that one type two X at first, it's gonna fatigue eventually, right? And so when you, as they progressively fatigue, you have to recruit more. So look at this. If I want to generate 150 watts when the muscles are not fresh, when they're very fatigued, I used to be able to get away with this many motor units, right? Just three type ones and three type two A's, but now they're fatigued and they won't do it. Now I'm going to require the three type two A's, or the three type ones, the three type two A's, and two type two X's to do 150 watts. In the past, I used to be able to get away with just a couple of motor units. Now I got all these motor units going. I have to power all of them. They all require ATP to go through the contraction cycle. They're still contracting. They just don't generate as much force or much power. So you have to recruit additional motor units. So that's why you're becoming less and less efficient. So then the question is, why does it progressively go up? Why do you keep going up and up like above critical power and in severe intensity domain? Why does the slow component keep going up? Well, look here. So to get the 150 Watts in a semi fatigue condition, you got desperate and you recruited that type two X fiber. So it's, it's contracting, but it's gonna fatigue. And so now in the very fatigue state, you have to recruit two type two X fibers. Eventually that type two X fiber is not gonna be able to cut it and you'll have to recruit another one and it's gonna fatigue. And now you'll have to recruit another one. And it's like dominoes where you recruit one that's fresh, it quickly fatigues. Now you have to recruit another one that's fresh and it quickly fatigues. And so you have just more and more muscle going and going, trying to contribute, trying to reach your power demand. Uh, and it increases your VO2 cost, your ATP cost. And eventually you'll hit VO2 max, you'll hit, you'll use all your muscle fibers and you won't be able to generate more force. So that progressive fatigue of these type two fibers, especially in the type ones a little bit, but especially the type two is why you're gonna get this VO2 slow component in the muscle.